In a technique called ordinary least squares regression, we compute a statistic called regression, called a regression coefficient. When we violate the independence assumption, in other words, when there's spatial autocorrelation in our data set, we know that our statistics, the regression coefficients, will be biased and the precision will be exaggerated. Bias implies that the regression coefficients that we estimate may be higher than they really are in the population. So we are systematically going to overestimate the regression coefficient when there's spatial autocorrelation. We're also going to exaggerate the precision of the regression coefficient. So when we compute, say, a t-score for the regression coefficient, our exaggerated precision is going to lead us to have higher t-scores than we should really have if the violation of independence or if the assumption of independence wasn't violated. So in that case, we are going to be committing type 1 errors if we violate this, the statistical independence assumption. So we are going to be finding synthetically high t-scores, which are going to lead us to reject the null hypothesis incorrectly, when in fact the truth may be that we shouldn't reject the null hypothesis, but because of our exaggerated precision, we are going to reject. And let's think about why we exaggerate precision. Recall that in all of our sample statistics, more or less, we found that the standard error of our statistics is equal to the standard deviation of the statistic in the sample divided by the square root of n. So when we have a larger sample size, our standard error is going to go down. If we have data on a map, say we have nine points. If we have nine independent points, all right, then we can use square root of nine in this equation to calculate the standard error of a statistic on these nine data values. But if these data values aren't independent, if, say, knowing what this data value is helps us to know what this one is and this one is and this one is because they're nearby, because these data values aren't independent over space, then in fact we don't have the full nine set, the set of nine independent samples to use in this equation. Really we have, effectively we have some smaller number of independent pieces of information because some of the information we have about this location can be gleaned by knowledge of what, you know, the data values are at the nearby observations. So this, each observation here, we can't really count as a full independent sample in this equation. So really say, and I'm just making this number up, perhaps we only have enough information to constitute six independent samples. Well then we should be using root six in this equation. And look what happens, because we have a smaller sample size, or a smaller effective sample size, our standard error is actually smaller than it would be if we were using root nine on the bottom. Now usually we don't correct for this, and we don't actually use root six. We'll go ahead and assume that these nine observations are independent, and therefore use root nine in this equation, and we're going to artificially make this standard error smaller than it should be, because really we should be using root six. And because we are artificially making the standard error smaller, we're going to artificially make our t or z scores bigger. And that's going to cause type one error. Because, say we have this, this is our t distribution, say this is a critical values, maybe in reality our t score is actually over here. That's what our t score would be if we in reality used the correct number of samples in our standard error. But if we incorrectly use nine instead of six, 
That's going to make our t-score higher, and there's a chance it's going to push our t-score into the critical region, in which case we're going to reject the null hypothesis when, in fact, really, in reality, we shouldn't have. Here's an example taken from the city of Toronto. In this map, we have about 20,000 house sales in the city of Toronto over a one-year period. Here's a map of the house sales by price, where blue colors represent the, uh, the cheaper houses and red colors the more expensive houses. This is a statistic called the ordinary least square residual. It's a measurement of whether or not our model that's predicting house prices is overestimating or underestimating the model. And the assumption from OLS is that, our, that there should be no spatial pattern in the OLS residuals. But here, we can see that there's a clear spatial pattern. There's some positive autocorrelation in this pattern, because similar values seem to cluster together on the map. We have high values with high values in here, and we have low values with low values over here. Well, this is evidence that would make us believe that we are committing that violation of the assumption of independence. And therefore, a regression analysis that we conduct on this data set is biased, and we have a false sense of confidence about how good our model is.